The other day I had set up my blower door to certify somebody for my blower door and duct tightness testing course and I haven't done that in a while and I found out that my house is floating at about negative almost nine pascals to outside. That is insanely high. Um, so a couple things while I'm walking here. One is that we did not notice this until now when I set up the, the monitor. So that's good. Um, but the second thing is that even high, very high performance homes like mine have problems like this. Like you're just gonna have weird stuff happen. So that's the studio. And I'm just trying to isolate here and make sure that this is uh, a whole house problem. And in fact, the whole house is also at negative eight. When I shut that door inside the studio, it goes down a little bit. So we can see that some of this is definitely the house, but also Look, it's drifting back up again. So some of this is probably a little bit wind, although this side of the house and that side of the house are two opposite sides of the house. There's no way the wind is doing the same thing to both of them, mysterious. And frankly, I've got so many things going on in the house, so many mechanical systems. We've got makeup air. You may notice that I have 15 filters in my house if I actually was to run all the systems that are installed, which I don't anymore. So I've subtracted six filters from that set, but still nine filters and a lot of piece of equipment. I'm just gonna do the easy thing here. Because we've got a lot of electrical stuff going on here, you can see how complicated this is. I'm just going to do this. Yeah. Okay, so now everything in the house is off. And our pressure has now baseline. So now we call this baseline pressure. So negative two is to do with stack effect of the home and also a little bit of wind. I have turned all these off because it is entirely possible that when I turn something off, that it actually isn't turning off or that the damper isn't closing or whatever. And I just want to take that little variable out of the equation. So now we've got everything off starting at roughly zero, as you can see. First thing that I'm going to do is jump to my dedicated exhaust fans, which are number one, radon fan. And it, maybe. Maybe the radon fan is something, but that's not all of it. I, I don't think that that's actually accounting for very much. That's good to know. Next is kitchen exhaust. Vent hood. Okay, good. That takes a few minutes to kick up, but we won't worry about that right now. So those are all of my one-way exhaust fans. Now, we want to take a look at the few things that do circulate air around. Um, my heat pump, uh, the makeup air system would only supply air, so I'm pretty sure that's not it. Here's the heater, and here's the fan for the makeup air system, and nothing. Okay, so now let's do the uh, heat pump. There's really no reason why the heat pump should be exhausting air to outside. None of the duct work is in unconditioned space and it has no connection to outdoors. So that really can't be it. Okay, so now we've kind of figured out that we've got some wind stuff going on and I can go ahead and start turning on uh, the rest of these. The things that I'm worried about right now are ERV. <sighs> ERV, <laughs> that's basically it. I'm gonna make the studio airtight by using my little automatic door threshold, which lowers a little air weather stripping to the floor. So now I've got this studio separated away. We have roughly the same numbers that we were looking at before. Come on, baby. All right, so we're a little higher. These ERVs have not kicked on because you have to have to manually do this. So I'm gonna turn this on to continuous level one, which is where it was. We can hear it start to ramp up. And I don't really think that's doing it. Okay, I think I may have found the culprit. So here we are back again at eight. Let's turn on some lights around here. 
my ERV uh, started running on its own without being reset, which is very interesting. I did not, the other one doesn't do that. And the other one day this did not do that. Okay, so I've got a warning here. Exhaust airflow. Come on. The exhaust airflow cannot reach the requested airflow in level. Clean filter, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's, that can't be correct because it looks like there's more exhaust than supply. Filter cleaning, the filters need to be cleaned. So this has got to be about the testing. This is like some of the testing that the AI does on itself. So let's go ahead and turn this thing off and see what happens to our pressure over here when it kicks down. Yep, that's definitely it. So now, to be, you should clean your filters, and I do, I am going to do that, but also, let's just explore this for a second. Um, I wanna go into installation, installation settings. It says, ooh, are you a professional? You say, yes, even if you're not, don't worry about that part. We're gonna do airflow adjustment. So medium is what I've got it at. It says 105 CFM, and it says balanced. This is where I'm a little bit confused, right? Because it should be, the AI system should be monitoring itself and making sure that we've got in and out. So I'm gonna go ahead and test medium speed. What it's doing is testing the RPM of the fan versus the wattage that's running through it. Right now, by the way, we are not depressurized the way this is running in test mode, which is confusing. We have 107, looks like, on supply, 101 on exhaust. That is not enough to pressurize or depressurize my house by any amount, much less create that negative eight that we have. So just remember, crap happens even in really high performance homes. You gotta maintain stuff, you gotta monitor stuff, you gotta test things, you gotta keep an eye on things. Don't forget to clean your filters. Uh, comment below if you have anything else to add. Like and subscribe. Tune in next time.